John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever, except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite. That we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have, to be, you have to be the supreme eclectic type of uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything is about. The thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for. And it's the intent you give uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There is a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does. After all, so it seems. I love her. If only she'd be my queen. Merlin, can you make her love me? Now look, I once stood exposed to the dragon's breath so that a man could lie one night with a woman. It took me nine moons to recover and offer this lunacy called love, this mad distemper that strikes down both beggar and king. Never again. Never. <laughs> Who will I marry then? You can tell me that at least. What do you see? Guinevere. And a beloved friend who will betray you. Guinevere. You're not listening. Your heart is not. Love is deaf as well as mine. That's it. You have a land to quell before you can start all this hair pulling and jumping about. I've made these only for you. I've mixed into them things that will heal you. Not too quickly. And they'll make you a little sleepy, so you can't escape. What's in them? It's an ancient mixture. Soft, unborn grains, flavored with rose petals. The rest is secret. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the cakes like looking at the future. Until you've tasted it, what do you really know? And then, of course, it's too late. Too late.
I see the hop way haven't forgotten about you. Fuck them. Not the first onion to lose a fight, you know. You said you have a job for me. You know, I was a lot younger than you when I crossed the salt. My parents died in the Taiping Rebellion. I didn't have any reason to stay in China. So I figured I'll come to America and make my fortune. Now, the captain of the ship, he had a different plan. He sailed us to Cuba, sold us as slaves. You know, I think it took a week before I understood I wasn't actually in America. I was a slave for 11 years, not a servant, not a coolie. Fucking slave. I think about the people I left behind. As far as I know, most of them are still there in Cuba, but not me. You know why? Why? Because I know I'm not a fucking slave. Now, you got your ass kicked, it happens, but I'm not buying this whole coolie act. Warriors have only two paths. Get killed or get better. That's it. PKA, you reality fuckers. This is Andre John McLean Hodge in the house once more. Uh, ready to die hard because it's pretty crazy times. Um, I want to thank you for being here and thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. This is my Earth Mother Pranic Healing Part 6. It's about 8 p.m. my evening, Saturday, the 17th of September 2022. Um, interesting times. Uh, I'm just going to get into this straight away and I'll see what I want to share. Um, I've had a lot come up. Um, I've said this a few times, but it's never been in a conversation because, uh, for whatever reason, it's never been an interesting topic to talk about. Usually when I speak to people, it's one-way conversation. So that's why I've got this outlet and my own channel is speaking my perceptions and my truth and I'm about to let it rip even harder. Um, I don't really get a lot of chance to have a conversation about these things. So thank you for allowing me to be in your journey, this outlet of me sharing my truth. Um, I've worked a lot out in these last couple of weeks. Um, I've had to go to ground big time. Because if you haven't been thorough or remember much about what I've said, um, 2013 in May, I um, had the privilege of being in a secret meeting with the Atnamatna Aboriginal tribe elders that weren't in Wilpena Pound. They came down here in walking distance of me and, a fr and someone I knew at the time wanted me to come along to help. And I've got a lot of business IT sort of keyboard ninja skills and stuff that can do a lot of things that most people can't on the internet and that and um, there was a 3D aspect of that but then there was also a unseen aspect which was me being around the ancestors and getting activated relative to whatever it is that I had the potential to do with the land and stuff that was my future potential and October 2013 I was riding a tram down to my meditation group at the time and I got this overwhelming algorithmic assessment of the reality back then was 
this is me in 2013, I was realizing how far ahead and aware I was compared to what I'd explored around the world and stuff. And I realized there weren't very many that could even comprehend what was going on. So I had this sort of question, or I did this offering to the earth and stuff of, I accept the role or whatever's needed. And it was interesting when I went to that meditation group after the meditation, my L, like meditation leader Rose Penn who was I think she was 101 at the time she would she used to do, give us a reading after the meditation she'd go around everyone in the group and give them a psychic reading and she goes oh you're gonna have a question that you have to accept or not a responsibility and I said to her I actually had that question on the train ride here and I accepted it and it was a bit like a blank slate a blank check or whatever I had to do and so I've got I guard the sacred site near the mouth of the River Murray which is like the Amazon of Australia I guard that region and that's the energy and that's where I learnt the energy of the infinite potential healing mechanics because I had worked with the sacred site and the energy and say the DNA upgrades and all that sort of stuff and all the potential that frequency relative to Earth Mother's pure source essence frequency sort of thing and that's where I learnt to literally um, not take Muhammad to the mountain bring the mountain to Muhammad and especially how it's been the last two years for the lockdown sort of process and stuff so long story short I have a lot of responsibility energetic defence contracts relative to the Australian continent let alone every other place in the world and stuff so If you've been thorough in my um, teachings, especially the Amplify the Echoes series, um, what I'll say this, right? The reason why I started doing these Earth Pranic Healings is because three things, right? Right now, what's been done to humanity is absolutely freaking horrific, right? Official figures aren't actual act, accurate um, they're probably 10 or 100 times worse than what the actual official ones are and they're, the official ones are horrific as it is so there's probably tens or hundreds of millions of people being killed already by the stuff um, there's probably tens and hundreds of millions of injuries relative to the stuff that's been forced in many regions to put into people's bodies and potentially going forward alright there's going to be billions of people that are going to die. All right? So, the way I see it, the species I am is under threat. All right? It's not a fucking joke. So, my expression of what I can do is do everything I can to prevent that. Because we are in war. If you think it's a joke, all right? see what happens. See what's going to unfold. All right? So I've gone to ground because basically there's a massive dose of Kumbaya-itis pandemic going on, all right, and I've stayed the frack away from it because I have those contracts with the land and I feel what's going on. And so when the sovereign changes, then I can feel it and I've been dream time freaking epic sort of defending the region and all that sort of stuff. So I don't really sleep a lot, but I've been sleeping a lot. And then when I'm not sleeping, I've been in meditation or healing. I, this is this conversation so far has been the longest conversation I've had in over three weeks. Um, so getting back to the Amplify the Echoes series in particular, but other videos as well, I've in I've entwined Ashiana Dean sort of teachings in them, and yeah, it's really cool because I went on Keyboard Ninja sort of. Uh, epicness during the week and I came across the transcription of the conference where she added what Michael her husband had been doing to her and the abuse and him controlling all the money and all sorts of bullshit criminality like abuse crazy shit that she went through all right so to me it's only like only made her achievement or what she's done so far even more epic than what it is and I've been there I've been on that side that she's been through 
like criminal sort of freaking behavior of st- like taking resources and stuff and keeping you a bit uh, grinded down and vulnerable and all that sort of shit so I can I there was an interview with him from 2017 which I never looked at all right and it's not because I didn't want to be thorough it's because I've been in the trenches behind the scenes and it's tough all right all, all you armchair generals that never stepped up and done anything you don't know what it's like to be the focus of shit all right so this is the three big things with her teachings that I've sort of shared so far. Two of them are in the past and one's active, all right? So the two in the past are 25,000 years ago, the Ayani Massacre, which is epic. Uh, Echoes part one and two. And I said to Captain Marvel at the time, I freaking do not give a shit about the twin flame sort of crap. But when I come across understandings, I share them, all right? And my metaphor of that was like being a one-hit wonder rock band that has to play that that tune 40 years and it just like over it, all right? And my attitude of the twin sort of thing is it's the difference between being finite and infinite. If you feel you need something other than who you are right now, you're, you're finite, all right? If you do not accept that you have everything you need, you do not need anything external and you build a foundation on that, it's a big, massive gap if you think that you need something other than who you are. And when you're working at this high level, you cannot afford to give gaps because you can get derailed and big potentials are unrealized. All right? So the two big things in the past that I've sort of said are the Ayani Massacre, which was 25,000 years ago, which... We lost control of the surface, so we've been an occupied species ever since. And 3470 BC, 5,000 years ago, was the Babylon Massacre, all right, where we were wiped and the checkerboard matrix has been in play and all sorts of stuff. All right? So the other thing that has been in play has been the shit coming out of the other side of the upside down Phantom Earth, Nibiru and Wormwood, the Death Star. Um through Stonehenge. Stonehenge is an open freaking like geyser of dark shit that's been a battleground in itself for 25,000 years. The Ioni Massacre couldn't have happened without that being there. So this has been there ever since, right? And this has been in play. And what I've dropped in many instances, I think it was in um, Pranic Killing Part 4, Earth Mother Pranic Killing Part 4 is about uh, the Georgia Guidestones was a distraction from um, uh, Stonehenge, right? So I've done a lot of work to help prevent that and I've put people in power to cap it. And so the Kumbaya Itis is thinking that the sovereign um, puppet out in front change is a good thing all right so what i was getting week before that at 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 least was in dreamtime battle to defend the land from the changing of the frequencies relative to the narrative perception of all that all right so the last four shows that i did took about 100 hours worth of work 20 hours of cleaning up the audios and stuff um plus sort of a lot of very subtle codependencies on me and stuff which this last few weeks has given me a chance to clear me and feel how I am and get me on my game and do a lot of healing and clearing and everything like clearing my gut, body work, pranic healing like today I've done a lot of clearing on my room because I've been very energetically taxed and stuff so getting my space all right ready to rock and deal with the ramifications of the opportunity that we had because the Queen's been in sovereign power for 70 years from the narrative perspective I was very close to nailing the date and the date um, I've just got to bow to the system for how magnificent the control has been Uh, I've been sort of in the background just appreciating all the variables at play because you have to understand that the Phantom Earth 
the Nibiru and the Wormwood and all that sort of stuff on the other side, it's reverse matrix. So what you think is good is bad. What you think is bad is good for that, all right? So say, for instance, banking, you having a, a debt with a bank, from a bank point of view, it's an asset. It's reverse matrix. That's how the system works. So whatever you think is bad, that thinks it's good. That's just a simple way of explaining it, all right? So what I've been doing is I've also sort of worked out many variables and I've been staying away from people because I've just been processing it and whether I want to actually share it or not and um, I've been able to splice up the AIs like influencing um, society and the mechanics of that because some of the things are just so epic and perfect. It's beyond what I feel humanity can do but there's also been like the John D negative negative magician sort of doing their law of the land so the way law works is uh, for instance when Australia was colonized they sent a lot of very demonically entity carrying beings that went and invaded the dream time to take out the shamans and uh, the negative dream time is where the the Metatron, Saturn, courts, uh, with the, the judges work and delegate all the crime and stuff like that. So with the change in the narrative, there's obviously being a frequency change. But like so Australia is a colony of England and in the Commonwealth and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's been pretty epic few weeks. And I've, if anything from that not being blocked off and capped with the crystals I sent over that region and it's been a big focus for a long time um, I've invested a lot in that region and stuff um, I've got a really good understanding of the mechanics now so we'll see what happens alright so I hope you're well I hope that helps, I'm going to get into the pranic healing I'm going to try and not take too long but it's been a good thing to 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 tool down and stay behind the scenes and not get involved. So I'm just going to sweep Earth. So just get into my zone. Sweeping. Do the North Pole. So I hope you've been well. I hope you made the most of this time. You've been investing a lot in yourself. Maybe reassessing, recalibrating to things. So I've been brewing, putting all these things together. I I couldn't. I had to do it in an encrypted way with all sorts of variables for people to engage their algorithms. So if you guys out there, any of you that picked up that these past couple of pranic healings I've done, I've been bait. I've been deliberately a brat to put focus on me to take it away from the region that was it. The focus or the region that was actually in play, all right? So I'm gonna gonna do pretty basic overview of Earth. I was actually brewing to do a Earth pranic healing on the eighth, and it flowed off across to the ninth. But I decided to disarm and step back. Um, just the energies are too epic at the moment, um, and the missed opportunity was pretty pretty epic, like we're talking 25,000 years of potential being blocked and all the shit that we've been through as a species, 
was very careful not to get involved and stay meditative. I'm going to work on the south pole now. You've got to understand that we're all overextended. There's not many of us. There's very few that even get this. Spiritual community is being, for the most part, a waft them, waste their fucking time and money. And the fascinating thing is people gravitate to the falsehood. <laughs> That's what happened. Many years ago, I was doing all the effort and huge amounts of money was being made and I was getting scraps off the table, so to speak. So I'm just going to visualize Earth's spleen at the front. So I thank her for her endurance of hosting all this. So I did, I've been doing a lot of healing on myself today. I, as I said, I've been a bit overextended just to endure what was going on. It was very avatar like waking up and worshipping the coffee gods, not talking to anyone, not allowing anyone's energy in. I don't need anyone, I'm a lone wolf, but I have to make my circle very small at the moment with the responsibilities I've got that seem to be oblivious to everyone. <laughs> and I overextend myself financially to get this all sort of done and so when the, not only is it not done and then the pounding that was going on, I'm getting Earth's right shoulder, a uh, left shoulder. <laughs> Doing the front spleen. So, what I'm contemplating, I don't usually talk about, I don't talk about missions before they're done. Right? So, what I was going to sort of offer, I'm getting a left shin, <laughs> right shin, sorry. But this is one thing I was dealing with with Max Steele, because he would say stuff that wasn't necessarily true or targeted. It was sort of using even falsehood and an algorithm, but on the telepathic level there was encryption. So if you ever watch Lord of the Rings, where Frodo met the Cape Blanchett um, elf princess, like Queen. She was talking publicly, but there was a telepathic, encrypted truth that was going directly to him. All right. So, when the future potentials, and it's in a public way, can't really say specifically. It's up to the individual to have the talents and the clarity and the clearance, and no gaps to be able to tune into what is needed. So, for instance, when I got my crystals to Captain Marvel, she took care of herself. She was able to manage herself, but then she took responsibility for the region she's in, and she's been doing that. She's in the toughest region on the planet, by far. All right? And she's been kicking ass. But I haven't dealt with her. I've kept her out of all this. Because... I just needed to brew all the potentials and all the variables that I've got to make it very clear. Um, so I'm going to work on a back spleen. So what I might do, and I again, I don't really talk about future potentials and stuff, but what I might do is do a Amplify the Echoes Part 8, explaining all these variables, because I've worked out a lot of the mechanics of the reality, so if anything, it will set up for the next potential. For those few people that actually listen to my stuff and hear it, they're not triggered by all their shit with me. <laughs> and I might, I definitely do a, definitely look to do a recalibration to a new energetic reality part three. Getting a lot of right shoulder, uh, left shoulder. It's very interesting. 
So I've been, I actually, in the recordings with Carlene, I said I'd, I was aiming to do 1,000 healings per session. And you think that's a lot? To me, I felt like I had 100,000 variables I needed to heal. Most people have probably got 20, 30, 40,000 variables, all right? But I raised my bar pretty high. But I feel my whole, I've got a lot of upgrades. My whole healing thing has changed. So I've been embryotic with my healing. That's why I've been closed off to everyone because I had to get me under control and integrate my new energetic reality based on, while things didn't turn out how they were meant to, I get gifts for the investment I do. Right? So when you invest in things like the potential and stuff, uh, it's not necessarily reality understood um, benefits. So you might get visions and perceptions and understandings and activations and upgrades and stuff. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But my whole healing structure has changed. I don't need to spend as long. And what I realized in the past, I've done it deliberately. I've engaged in the conscious awareness of people. So I've held space for them to have their DNA memories unlocked after I clear all their stuff so they get self-realization of what goes on and it locks in the foundation of the healing. It's not like someone else doing it and leading them. They self-realize. That's the big thing. That's why I give so much time. A lot of people avoid it and stuff, but those of you that really invested in yourself and allowed me to hold space, it was really cool what happened, such as abuse and stigmatization of... Ukrainian oligarch raping sort of scenarios. <laughs> Shout out to you, superstar. As I feel your left calf. <laughs> um, I'm going to not be so passive with my sessions going forward. I'm going to control it and just get on with it. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I think that will bring about more clearing with people and then I get people up to speed quicker and then we can deal with that conscious. So I've worked out that the I need to engage the body consciousness more, like work with the body. So you imagine like Doctor Strange and his cloak, the cloak is consciousness, so I'm going to deal with your cloak consciousness more. We'll see what happens, right? Because I think that will be more effective because people just don't have the conscious awareness of what may be going on despite all the videos and teachings that I've sort of offered. So I'm going to start. I always start with around the US East Coast. All the way down. to New York, Washington region. And do Florida. Go for Mexico, Cuba. I'm going to do a bit more focus on the Commonwealth countries as well. Obviously, there's been an energetic shift. But the ramifications I feel with Stonehenge not being closed off is that the World Economic Forum empire is going to tighten the screws and Prince Charles, King Charles now, that was never meant to supposedly be King Charles, um, he's been fully aligned with the World Economic Forum for a very long time. And I told someone that to me, the whole leadership over in England and stuff was a setup for failure to bring about that a few weeks ago. So I'm going to do the west coast of the US, all the way down from Alaska, all the way down America. Pole to pole.
both sides of the Atlantic are very important at the moment. That's what I got as well. So I'm going to do the middle of America. Canada So I'm going to go across the Pacific first this time. I'll finish off with Europe. So I'll do the Pacific. Hawaii. Asia from Russia all the way down Japan, China, Japan, South China Sea, all of Asia. Do Australia, West Coast Australia. Don't take anything what I say is hard. Just if you've watched Michael Jordan, The Last Dance and stuff. I'm professional, but I'm also after the championship. And the championship we're after is the freedom of the universe from these fuckers. Alright? So we've got to be tough on each other. Call out the gaps. Vulnerabilities. We're so rare to be here and aware through all this. We gotta own it, alright? Leave no gaps. Or they're just gonna get exposed like cracks in the dam. So I'm gonna do Central Australia. You gotta understand, hundreds of countries are aligned with this stuff. Trillions of dollars, the medical system, banking, layers of political sort of structures, right? We're walking tightropes, there's not much support. Spiritual community, for the most part, very few in it. Alright. Gonna do the East Coast of Australia. 
the scales against us are happy, right? But the truth is on our side. And so when I said, I find it fascinating people don't know truth and falsehood is accepted. To me, it's the corruption in people that gravitate them. Like attracts like. So finite attracts finite. All right? Infinite attracts infinite. It's not a joke. So I'm going to do southeast corner of Australia, Canberra and Melbourne, that corner in Sydney. Go over to New Zealand. Just going to do China. Hong Kong, North Southeast Asia, and do Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. And Sri Lanka. over to the Middle East, Turkey all the way down to Egypt and Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Mecca, And tangle back of my left calf. Nice try. I'm too on my game at the moment. I'm gonna do all of Africa. Down to South Africa. to the Indian Ocean. Do Russia and Ukraine. And all the northern Eurasia or eastern Eurasia. Black Sea. Or Caspian Sea, I mean. Do Russia, Western Russia, D 
the Ukraine. to Eastern Europe, all the way down to Turkey, Croatia and Greece. And to Southern Europe, Mediterranean, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Germany Holland and Belgium Switzerland Northern Europe, I keep actually missing you guys. Sweden, Finland, Norway, all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Russia as well, a lot of military stuff up there. Just do the Black Sea.
do Stonehenge. We see you, Stonehenge. So yeah, for me the metaphor it's felt like if you've watched Star Wars Rogue One, which is an awesome movie that flowed into Star Wars. Rogue One was about stealing the Death Star plan, so finding the Ashiana stuff for me was a bit like discovering that and going through all the bullshit I've been through to get to that and the truth foundation. And we've sort of been on a rebellion Death Star takedown mission. We just missed out. So I've just been recalibrating to that and what the potentials are. Avoiding the Kumbaya itis pandemic. Thinking that despite we're offered a pyramid, it's a holographic. If you understand IT and servers and stuff, there's built in redundancies and all sorts of stuff. So there's no single point of failure. So the figurehead in the public space isn't really what it is but I felt like she died at least a week ago before but as I said earlier that date it's exquisite that's why I've got to bow to the in the dojo of the system out of respect for the incredible transition elegance that they've done. I've been in awe of how epic and how masterful it's been. So that date, 8, 9, 2022, 8 and 9 together, 17, 1, 7 together is an 8, so that's an indicator of the Draco sort of thing. Um, but the 17 and 6 together is 23, so that's the number that indicates that it was planned from my perspective. 8 and 9 and 23, alright? And then 17 and then 8. It's really exquisite to me. So once I got that, I could reverse engineer what I was feeling and going on and stuff. So I've got the got the reference of those sort of experiences and the energies of that to go forward so I know what's going on. Obviously there's not been a sovereign die for 70 years in the narrative so we haven't really had a reference for it so it's a good data accumulation experience of being in it frequency wise and stuff and as I said my responsibilities with the, the land and earth and stuff those few of you here, I appreciate you to even hear what I say. Not many do. And as I said, my channel now is a bit of an outlet for me to speak at my pace and I'm I'm gonna pick it up. <laughs> I've been feel like I've been in a bit gear two, I've got another couple of gears I feel, so we'll see what happens and I'm not afraid of speaking my truth and letting it rip. I just wanna do Peru. Like Titicaca region, Pumapunku, and all that sort of stuff. Machu Picchu. So, I'll just do a sweep. So, don't take it all too personally. Take it as a recalibration opportunity of what I worked out. Correct your gaps that you may have. Own your infinite, guys. So, I've, on my website, I've got choose your own adventure, own your power, determine your own fate. It's up to us, guys. There's no one really else that are up to it. So, I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey in whatever capacity. Uh, as I said, I've shifted things up, so I'm just being a bit disconnected deliberately. 
and see what happens, alright? So thanks for being you and thanks for the courage being here now. Uh, until next time guys, you PKA, you reality frackers, keep up the good work. Lots of love, Andre out. John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite then we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have, to be, you have to be the supreme eclectic type of... Uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything is about. And the thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey, and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for, and it's the intent you give. Uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There's a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does.